A lot of people just made a confession with be made the righteousness of God, which is true. But Jesus said there is a blessing that comes upon a person who is thirsty and hunger for what? For doing right things and doing things right. Two, there, there are two sides to this blessing. Blessed are they who do us the right things and do things what? So firstly, I must do what? Do the right thing. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I must do the right thing. And I must do what? Things right. Hallelujah. These types of crave and hunger after righteousness, it is a type of righteousness that helps you to do right thing and to do things right. There is a measure of blessing that comes upon you when you do things right and you do right things. Say it loud and clear. There is a measure of blessing that comes upon me when I do right things and I do things right. There is a measure of blessing I receive, I obtain when I do the right thing and I do things right. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you learn it, if you are hungry for it, I want to dress right. I want to talk right. I want to speak right. I want to sit right. I want to stand right. I want to move right. I want to eat right. If you are thirsty and hunger after righteousness, the scripture says you will be filled. Now, the question is, if I am thirsty for righteousness, what will I be filled of? What is filling me? Is it the righteousness filling me when I am thirsty and I am hungry for righteousness? I will be filled. What God filled you with is not righteousness, it's the grace to be righteous. Do you hear what I'm just saying? Grace to be what? Immediately God sees hunger and thirst. Genuine hunger and thirst in your life. God releases ability from him to do the right things and to do things right. And that is what that is a different that's the difference between someone who wishes right thing but is not thirsty for it. There is a level be different between I wish to do something and I am thirsty to do it. Everybody wishes to be a good girl. Only few are thirsty to be a good girl. Everybody wishes to be a good husband, but only few are thirsty to be a good man. So you must know the difference between wish. Because a wish does not contain pressure. It is only when you are thirsty that you are making demand on the realities of God. So blessed are they which, are, which do hunger. Which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. I pray you shall be filled. There is a condition. If you are thirsty and hunger after righteousness. Let me say this. When you are serving God, you must be very careful because there may come a time in your Christian life that it may look like God is not practical. For example, if I am teaching on forgiveness of sin and I teach you on forgive those who have offended you, at the back of your mind, you may feel there is no grace to forgive. That's not, that's not possible. So when Jesus was preaching, he preached to a certain level. Some of the people that heard him said, these, are the two, these things are too difficult, and they walk away. Then it remained 12 disciples. So Jesus said, Peter, are you also going? He said, to whom shall we go? You have the word of life. If you are not careful, if you come to church and you are hearing the word of God, you are hearing the word of God, you become selective. I said, this one pastor has said, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can only do this. Now, if you are no longer thirsty and hunger after righteousness, you become a religious person. You will just be a good for nothing Christian, without fruit, without evidence. May you not get to that point. Amen. That the only thing that you will be doing in church is being added to those who fill up the chairs. 
Because at the end of the day, after you have had the word of God, and then you are very selective in the word you have had, there is no ability to become the doer of the word of God. That is why you see, you know, it is easy for a local girl to go to church and pray and shout and continue what she is doing. To him or to her, church is a fun or is a religious ob obligation. But on the very day that lady begins to thirst and hunger after what? Genuine thirst and hunger. God is going to release grace to stop it. If you have never been thirsty and hunger, there will not be a release of grace. Grace doesn't come without hunger. If you are not craving, it won't be released. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I am thirsty. I am thirsty. I am hungry. After righteousness, I want to do right thing. I want to do things right. And I ask you that you will give me the grace to do it. Once you are thirsty, you leave it for God. He sees genuine hunger. He sees genuine thirstiness. He releases grace. He gives grace to the humble. That is the same thing Blessed are the poor in the spirit. For there is what? Do you understand what I'm saying? God is a giver of grace. He gives grace. He gives grace. He gives grace. God doesn't withhold grace. He gives what? Can you say it one more time? Can you say it louder? He does not withhold grace grace. God releases ability on the condition of you being hungry and thirsty afterward. Some of, some of you will soon get to school now and then admission will begin around August, September. If you think that going to school is a means of escape, yes, then you will know that there are devils that are your senior in campus. With, no matter the level of nonsense you want to do, you will meet your elder there. And no matter the level of good things you want to do, there is, another, there is an example. You will always find somebody to inspire you to do good things. Either the word of God, the Holy Spirit is putting impressions in your heart. Hallelujah. For how long are you going to be cursing people? For how long will you use negative language? Somebody say, I have begged God to remove it from my mouth. He will never. You thirst and hunger after righteousness, you shall be what? It, when you are filled, it will stop. But you are not craving. You like it. It's your act of defense. When somebody offends you, you react. That reaction is your defense. The Bible says when you are thirsty and hungry for righteousness, you wouldn't need those reactions. Hallelujah. God searches the king's heart by his spirit for the spirit knoweth all things the deep things of God so blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God now if you hear for they shall see the Lord it's not talking about rapture that's not the Bible that's not what the Bible is talking about it that they shall see God is not that when Jesus now come, they will now see Jesus. That when you are pure in heart, you will see God in every situation. In what? Every situation. Somebody break your heart, you will see God in it. Somebody disappointed you, you will see God in it. Somebody promised to give you a bag of rice, it doesn't come, you will see God in it. Those are the type of the people the Bible says all things are now working together for good to them that love God. Who are the call according to purpose. We cannot just continue to teach higher revelation, higher revelation. Let's come back and settle down with our Christian life. Blessed are the pure in heart. This our world. Ability to design the involvement of God in what is going on. You will quickly see it. Because your heart is pure. So to him that is pure. All things are pure. But to the undefiled and unbelieving. Nothing is pure. Even their conscience is seared. Titus. 
to the pure, all things are pure. If you are not pure, this chair to you is not pure. Somebody give you rice and they put small pepper, you will say poison is there. If they put big pepper, you will say it's extra poison. If they don't put pepper at all, you will say it's demon. If they put small, you will say it's small demon. So if you don't, if you are not pure in heart, you can't accommodate people. Hallelujah. Do you hear what I've just said? If you are not around and you call and I say, hello, sister, I don't care. Please go to our house. We are coming. Help us prepare something. If I am not pure in heart, immediately I eat a spoon. Mommy ate a spoon. I started coughing. The one who is not pure in heart, his mind goes to Sister Ronke. She has poison worth. And it was coincidence. So those who are not pure in heart, they are in trouble. If you are not pure in heart, if your husband is snoring, he wants to use it for money ritual. If he stand up and he's doing like this, makata, he says, Kira you understand? If he puts his phone on the chair because your heart is corrupted and that the guy locked the phone. He said, my mind is not clean. Mm -mm. It's, yes, your mind is not clean. He said, my mind is not true about my house. Yes, your mind is not true. Because it's your mind. The Bible says love. Believe it. Often. So love is the fruit of purity. If somebody tells you your husband is flirting around until you catch him, until you catch him like this, you must continue to believe him until you catch him. And after you have caught him and he has repented, you must resume your belief. Because I don't understand this kind of Christianity we are doing. That's why the measure of the blessing that follow pureness of heart doesn't follow. Believers are poor. They die young. Believers are miserable. Go to UCH. Go to UCH and go to the psychiatric hospital. Is it psychiatric department? You will see more than 50% are pastor's wife. Yes. Go there. You will see them there. Praying in tongues. Abnormally. You will, the, reason, the only reason why you will know this one is mad is because the way the praying in tongue is coming. At least when you pray in tongue, you should be okay. But they will pray in tongue, they will stare their face. When you say amen, they will not stop. If you are now saying, in Jesus' name we pray, they will now start fighting you. You say, I'm not yet done. They, you will see them. Why? This lack of the purity in heart. Your husband wake up early in the morning, you tiptoe after him. What are you looking for? Blessed are the pure in her. You are the one the Bible says you are blessed for being pure in her. Let the husband come back after a week and say, Honey, I have wronged you. I have seen a gauge. He is the one that should be restless, not you. The pure in heart should be restful. The one who is not pure should be restful. But the pure in heart now is restless. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall work. What, 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 what are they going to see? They will see God in every situation. They will see what? God. I'm not hearing you again. If you, plan, if you plan wedding, an engagement remains two months. And your guy just send you a just text message, two lines. I am no longer interested. Bounce the phone, pack the phone, try to reach the guy. And then the phone is not going through. What will you do? You will stop serving God. Amen? Amen? And after five months, coincidentally, you meet the guy in the supermarket with another lady with engagement ring. See the pure in heart. She is the one. He should see you and vibrate, not you. Because you are fulfilling the scripture. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see what. Can you see God? In a situation that looks so desperate. Can you see God in a situation that looks so dicey? Can you see God? Can you walk up to a lady, a guy, 
I said thank you for breaking up with me. I just want to thank you because you really help my mind together to focus on him. Today I'm fine. What about you? He said, I'm also fine. Have you married? He said, I've married. I also have married. I'm ha happily married. That's my wife. That's my husband. Look at my children. God bless you. I'll keep praying for you. That's Christianity. It's not that you see about marabababababababa. No, 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 no. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall walk. The reason why you see demons every time is because your heart is not pure. That impurity of heart attracts impure images. Blessed are what? For this are what? Do you hear what I just said? I was in the house three days or four days ago as I slept in the night. And I, uh, the moment I slept, I had a little trouble before I slept. So I knew the demon because once a demon is around you, your spirit will be restless. It's a strong, you find, to, you try to sleep, you couldn't sleep. You are, the, there is a presence that, is, that your spirit is not comfortable with. So eventually I slept. So when I slept, I saw a spirit with a meat, just a piece of meat, and it's trying to put it in my mouth. So it put it here, and I hung it. I did like it. <laughs> it's like your first is not going. I open my body and boo. So now, so when I open my eyes, to my amazement, when I open my eyes for five minutes, I saw. A color of blood that surrounds where I was. I, will, I opened my eyes. I didn't close. I saw the blood. The blood changed the color of everything around me. And after about five minutes, it became normal. I want to say something to you that will transform your life forever. Blessed are the pure in heart what will they see if you see if you have nightmare constantly your heart is a factor blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god in everything they are going through but you will see satan in everything you are going through if your heart is not pure you know, one of the things the devil does is that he brings arrangements around belief. If you believe people can kill you, then Satan is going to work arrangements around that thing. If I am pure in heart, I will see God. Say it one, two, go. In every situation. One more time. The ability to see God in every situation, to see God in every situation. Is, depends on the pureness of what? Of heart. To be very alone, you know, but you can't. It depends. Lori, be your can. I'm going And be very careful every time when you are saying, How come you must say anything? How come you must say anything? How come you must say my heart is not pure towards this. It's not pure towards this. You are going to another direction. Your Christianity is packing up. You'll be full of suspicion. And not discernment. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why, why do you have some pastors that can't celebrate the success of their member? Amen? Amen. Why do you have pastors who can't celebrate the success of their member? They are not pure. We have almost 10 pastors, 10 ministers of God in our local church here. So if I am not okay, I won't be comfortable with them. I will be preaching against them. I will be giving them warning. <laughs> when you are not pure in heart, you won't see God. If you fail, there is God in it. If you are disappointed, there is God in it. If your child needs to go to school around 7 a.m., he got to school by 8.30 if you are pure, you will see God in it. That is why the Bible says all things, uh, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made. 
known unto God. Do we understand? So look at this diagram of a clean, a pure heart, and look at a busy, occupied heart. This one can hear the voice of God. The moment God speaks to this heart, and he says, Shegun, it will echo. But this one, when God says, Shegun, resentment will resist it. Anger will resist it. Jealousy will resist it. A heart full of curses. When God said, Shegun, you are blessed. What you will hear, you won't hear you are blessed. You will hear Shegun, Bola Yeshiri. Now, there is a converter inside you who has converted the voice of God to that, the dealings of your mind, the makeup of your mind. So, some people can't actually hear the voice of God. Somebody said, I used to hear God audibly. It's not, there is nothing to rejoice. Audible voice is a sign that you have never been consistent with the inner voice of the witness. It's not a sign of spirituality. You want to enter a bus and God says, Kenny, don't enter. God has been speaking to you never to enter. But because you don't hear, he has to shout on you so that you won't die cheap. So let's go back to where are we now? I'm talking about the beautitudes. That is the first eight blessings that Jesus spoke. Blessed are the peace maker for they shall be called what now hello according to this bible if you check john 1 12 as many as believe him to then give you power to become what this is another level everybody who is a peace word maker people we call that person child of God. They won't call him pastor. They won't call him evangelist. They won't call him prophet. They will call him what? A child of God. So if you set to a fight between good and grace, you are a child of God, not their father. But if you use glory, your last born, to finish your grace, you are a bad father. Because what some of you do is that you will use the younger. That was the crisis of Joseph. When the father will tell Joseph, go to the field, check on your brothers and give me what? The demons of Conga will show up. Never in your life use the younger ones to tell the older ones. Don't use don't do that. If you do that, after Jacob received the blessing, he ran away. I want to come and then you can draw Jen. Ori Ori Be peacemaker. Be what? Oh, Nilo Kopri. The Bible says you are blessed. There is an allocation that comes because you are a child of God. This Christianity that tells you that everything depends on prayer is a scam. Everything doesn't depend on prayer. Prayer is an aspect of Christian life. There is a way you walk. In your, I may wake up in the morning and I have I have 2,000. I will ne ask my wife, I have never been worried that I have 2,000 in my account. I will continue living a normal life. And when the alert enter, you won't know. Whether I have a huge amount or no amount is me. I'm going to counsel you the same way I will counsel you. I'm going to pray the same prayer. If I come to this altar with 1,000 in my account, you don't have any message, man, go not I have trained myself. So it is easier to hear the voice of God. It's not that the Lord will help us. Amen. Do you know the meaning of the word blessed here? It means fortunate, to be envied. It will keep coming. You are not labor for it. 
you are just in a position. You must know the difference between laboring for blessing and being in a position. Someone say, be in a position. To be in a position for blessing is better than to be laboring for blessing. Just be in the position. As long as Elijah is with the widow in Gotop, why? He, that is position. So blessing comes most of the time through what? Through position. You see the way I'm preaching? Hallelujah. As if I am cool. I just want you to enjoy the blessings of God. Somebody say, I pray for three hours. I have fasted for three days. I have, I have bind. I have loose. Blessed are the peacemaker. 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 Try to find. Try. Always bring peace in between two troubled people. Do you understand? Make sure you do everything within your power to settle issues for people. Do you understand? When I got born again, my father would send me out of the room. I, the first study I made as a, as a Christian, I did that because we were living face me and face you. I did it outside the house between 12 midnight till 4 a.m. I will be outside. I will be looking at the vigilante with torchlight reading Bible. After I've read it, I enter the house. I won't enter into the room. I will be in the passage. Then I will have a stool and a chair. I will be reading Bible. The first Bible I bought, I bought the 26 Naira. Because they used to give me 50 Kobo. So I make a lot of contribution for that money for some month. Stop myself and bought the Bible. If you don't want to be persecuted, the people, the moment people talk, you you talk back. They fire you, you fire them. You are reducing the blessing that is coming after that persecution. Do we understand? This Christianity is also fishy. If we will fake back with more Christianity into Makwadagbani. Because Christianity is not sharp Christianity. It's godly. Hallelujah. Somebody talk to you, you talk back. Somebody fire you, fire them. And you are now, you that they are persecuting, you are now treating them. You will know that my God will answer you. No, no. He said, blessed are they which are persecuted. You see, with the way everybody is quiet. I know you have never heard this. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteous sake. For there is what? There is no how you will go to hell if you endure persecution and you still remain righteous. He said the heaven is made for you. In verse 11. 11. Blessed are ye. Now give me new living translation for this verse. What is in my mind this evening is that God told me that I should tell you that you should straighten up your Christian life. It is hindering God's blessing. God blesses you when people please talk to me. And let's read it one together. God blesses me when people mock me and persecute me and lie about me and say all sorts of evil things against me because you are my followers. How many of you want to be mocked? So you don't know that Prophet Tio Abadari, whose eyes was blind, and he was open the eyes of the people. He, 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 you don't know he's a mock. They mock Jesus, they say, Physician, heal yourself. At least we have had your report that you heal the people. You raise the dead. Now they are hanging you on the tree like a calendar. Do something. He must not do something. Because he has heaven to inherit and the earth to take over. Remember after that he said, Behold, 
all power in heaven and on the earth as well. So if you want the, heaven, the power in heaven and the earth to be given unto you, you will not do something. God can't give you enough power because any small thing you are causing, any small thing you are angry. Hallelujah. Do you know, at times, me, myself, I feel powerless. <laughs> at times, I feel powerless. I say, do I really have the power of God? And, and you know, the devil is smart. Because if you offend me now, he will want me to test the power. Instead of me using the power to bless you, it will be going the other direction. Be happy about it. That's where I'm going. When people mock you for righteous sake, be happy about what? We are not happy. We are always sad. We are always sad. We are always sad. And because you are always sad, it doesn't produce what God wanted to do. God wanted to do something. But you won't let it happen. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a time I was driving Benz and then I don't know whether I, my, my car scratched a lady's car. I, I want to believe that lady, the husband, was very wealthy. It was in Bodija. She came out, began to speak all grammar. Vibrating, shaking grand. Young girl, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, ma. I'm sorry, ma. She continued to blow ground. People stood up. I said, waiting now. Don't you see this? He's a married man. And he said, he's sorry. I didn't talk. So God just raised me, raised me talkative. And then they did that on my behalf. And then she begged me later. Because I didn't talk. Otherwise, a lot of things will be going through my mind. Let me show her. Let me show her. Let's show her. Anoint her. Be happy about it. Be glad. Be glad. Bible is difficult. Be happy. Be what? For a great reward awaits you in what? And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in what? So when you hear, touch not my anointed. Be in the Old Testament too. Jeremiah, they will touch him like this. Mom! Throw him in prison. Bush. Jeremiah wrote a book under the inspiration. The secretary of Jeremiah was called Barak. They took the book and, and set it ablaze. Jeremiah cried. He said, I have lost the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the second time and said, let Barak pick his pen and write again. Do you know God dictated that same prophecy in a more voluminous way? Be happy. Be glad. This type of teaching, people don't like it. Hey! There is a place for that, but not every time. Not every enemy God will kill. Uh-uh. And if God answers that prayer every time, you, you will kill yourself. Because you are also your enemy. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted in the same way. In what? In what? Hallelujah. In what? I, I was giving a word of prophecy to a man, and the wife started kneeling down and begging the man. Say, I didn't tell daddy anything oh, before he goes. Daddy, let's settle this thing. My husband is here. Because if you leave now, there will be a problem. It's everything you are saying. Daddy, did I tell you? I said, No. And the husband was looking at me one time. Hey, you have gone to tell Pastor everything. He's now presenting it as a prophecy. I say he has never your wife has never told me anything. Otherwise, because that prophecy would become persecution. Be glad. Be glad. If you hear somebody speak about you in an evil manner, be glad. 
If you hear people backbite you in an unworthy way, be glad. Aren't you glad that people are discussing you? Now you are getting better. They say you are old school. Before, before, you are like Asha Woge. Now you are becoming church girl. They say, Kofaimon, what do you want? Be glad. Somebody shall be glad. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? If I use you as an example now in the church, you'll be angry. Why are you angry? Who should I look for? I use as an example. I'm not using you as an example of bad thing. Just an example. Be glad. Somebody say, I'll be glad. If I am persecuted for righteous sake, I will be glad. I prepare a different teaching for today, but the Spirit of God won't allow me. My teaching today is a spiritual blessing. I'm just talking about different measure of blessings which is attached to a kind of life you live under Christ. Be glad. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. People are not happy. When I, when I ask you a question, why are you not happy? You will say, because I don't have money. Have you ever heard in that place that blessed are those who have money? To tell you that when you have the money, you are not still blessed. This is the Bible. Yes. Have you ever read anywhere we have reading? Now, bless are those who have dollar. For they shall be called what? Dollania. Let's read this scripture together. I want to go. Yes. All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Let's read it other translation. How many of you want to live godly? You don't want to take bribe. You want to say it the way it is. Eh? <laughs> you suffer persecution. Hallelujah. I know how many things they are talking about me in Igboro. It's tough. It's direct. It won't take nonsense. I thank God. At least in everything you are saying, this is humanizer. Reverend Paul has concubine. You don't, you don't know Reverend Paul. Along Songo Road. They didn't say that. Is it that it's tough? He takes his turn. It's a good, it's a good profile. Is it not better? Uh, is there anybody in this store that have ever hugged? I'm not talking of kissing, hugging. Eh? Uh -huh. But you will lose, you will get a pastor who is womanizer, you will say, speak on Papa. The, the lady the pastor slept with on Saturday night is receiving prophecy from the pastor who slept with her. You know, this whole world is crazy. So if that, if that is what you have managed, it, at least that is, is okay. Amen. Anyone who wants to live all out for Christ is in for a lot of trouble. There is no getting around it. If you want to live all for Christ, not some, all for Christ, you will get into trouble. And the trouble you will get into, you will get into trouble with people. You will get into trouble with people. I have, when I opened my Facebook Messenger, of last two weeks, I started responding to some of the messages people have sent to me 2015, 2016, 17, 18, 19. I'm just responding to them. Daddy, we need to talk. I don't know him. Some of them will say, Daddy, I want to marry. But this is the name. Ikechuku. Another one, Chukemeka. Which one should I marry? I say, you are crazy. Am I your, am I your pastor? Do you hear what I've just said? Somebody said, Pastor, uh, I, you, I, I read on the Facebook that people should be ordained. And I am not ordained. I'm, I have started a church. Can you ordain me? As a, am I your pastor? So when you see a pastor who is down to earth, direct, firm, you don't like them. And for me, I change it not. Amen? So people who are united 
to Christ Jesus want to live for God, but certainly other people will cause trouble for them. You want to live out for God, other people will cause trouble for you. You understand what I'm saying? Other people will do what? Other people will cause trouble for you. Yeah. One day we were in the church and then lady, I don't know who invited the lady. The lady walked in and then she sat in front of me in the office and she was there and then uh, excuse her. Um, uh, I said, what is the problem? <laughs> She's coming for the first. I said, what is the problem? I said, okay, sorry sir. I said, stand up. You see the other room. My wife will know how to handle you better because the way you are behaving here, I don't know whether electric shock don't catch you. So I call mommy. I said, follow her. She will help you because I can't. Help. It's very. I can't help you. The way you are doing like this, so I won't use Bible to break your head. So stand up and go and meet mom. You must be firm. I say you are doing Christianity. You are not firm. You are doing Christianity. They are touching your body. Once in a while, they touch your bread. They near me, leave me alone. You don't want to be, you don't want to be persecuted. Over <laughs> Jonah, you better take your stand, because this holiness. <laughs> you know, there are some things I have not experienced, and I will not experience them. I've told my wife when I have some of the things people say. My wife say, as a me, I've never experienced that. I alone need to experience it. I'm me only kiri. It's really difficult for you to come to my house and practice nonsense. And I don't do counseling except Sunday. All of us are there, including the king. Amen. If you don't know the reason why I put it on Sunday, <laughs> you don't, some of you don't know anything. So when is our counseling day? Everybody is there. For example, if a married man looks at you and says, I want to marry you, what is the first thing you will say? You say, Ah, hey, leave me. Ah, hey. They are not taking you serious. When they see the righteousness, how many of you know that there is a way they give us name? Why? He is standing. Having done all to stand. 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 It's not healthy for a local girl to be given offering. It's not healthy. Yahoo is taking over churches. Pastors are doing naming for them. Somebody say I didn't know woman being. They should find their pastor. If a Yahoo boy is coming to and the Yahoo boy is asking the pastor to come and do naming ceremony with beer on the table, the pastor will have to take his stand. Hallelujah. Amen. Let Olosho girl and Yahoo boy find their pastor. I can't pastor Olosho girl. And I will not pastor Yahoo boy. Let them find their pastor. Because the church of God is 80% saint. It's not just a gathering. You don't understand what I'm saying. If we all gather together, the spirit of Jesus is present. So if we gather together in a church, and the spirit of Jesus is present in the church, no, I won't do marriage for Losho and Yahoo boys. I won't. Because I will go after you and find out what you are doing. If that is the reason why I will need to be poor for a while, so be it. Take your stand. Some of you are looking at me, Pastor uh, you just follow my step, you will be okay. Do you understand? I learned a lot of Yahoo boys in a lot of churches. I've never found one in our church. And there is no placard there and say, don't come. I think maybe when they stroll in and they look, they just say, oh boy, this is not our place. Yes, it can be. Because this is a church. Because some of you don't know what church means. When you hear this is a church, it's the gathering of the saints. It's a cliché. It's not where we gather and somebody is with cigarette pack in his pocket. Another person is with condom in his pocket. And if, even if they are with condom and cigarette and they are not getting saved 
and they are not responding to the preaching of salvation, they should look for somewhere. Because the remaining of us here will soon join the gang. Spirit influences spirit. It will help us. It will help us. It will help me. It will help me. I depend on you, O Lord Jesus. I depend on you. So, I cannot help myself. I depend on you. This is what he's saying. The second one is what? Verse 4. Look at it. I'm just... I, I, how many of you are blessed? Yes, if you are blessed, say amen. Yeah. Blessed are those who are what? For they shall be what? Second Corinthians 7 verse 13. Those who are, let's read 2 Corinthians 7 verse 13. New Living Translation. I want that word to stay in your heart. 2 Corinthians 7 13. I want that word to stay in your heart. Now, give us New Living Translation. We have been greatly encouraged by this. In addition to our own encouragement, it, no, verse 10. Okay, let's read verse 10. Thank you. Verse 10. Give us verse 10. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience. Please read. For the kind of sorrow God wants us to experience, lead us away from sin and what? There is no regret for that kind of what? But worldly sorrow which lacks repentance results in what? You know worldly sorrow? Ah, I have lost my hearing. Hey, three weeks, you are still crying. Look at message translation. Worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow. Worldly sorrow. Ah, they gave him sack letter. I say he's not coming to church again. Worldly sorrow. One of his tires busted. The tire of his car busted. He said he's not coming to church. You better abandon it inside petrol station and come to church. Distress that drives us to God does that. It turns us around. It gets us back in the way of salvation. We never regret that kind of pain. But those who let distress drive them away from God are full of regret. End up on a deathbed of I die no, I die no. I will have served God better. See my life. Vanity upon vanity. Vanity upon vanity. vanity. If you let distress drive you away from God, you will be full of regret. People come to church only on Sundays. I know people in this church that only on Sunday they attend. And by 11 they are checking work clock. Those of you who are coming on Wednesday because you are workers. You want to avoid suspension. People are not really serving God. Amplified translation. This is a message everybody should go and pray and repent and ask God to help him. And this is a very important... There is a message I want to preach today, but the Holy Spirit said no. That pray, preach and teach and let the people receive strength. For godly sorrow... That is in accord with the will of God produces what? Without what? Leading to salvation. But worldly sorrow, the hopeless sorrow of those who do not believe, produces what? Yes. How can somebody say he steal money? He steal money about his lost car or five years ago. The car you lost, the arm robber took from you five years ago. You are still crying every day. What if the enemies, if the doctor says one of your kidneys shut down, what will you do? You won't come to church. You just write a letter to church. He says, Hello, sir. For a while, I want to leave the church. I am weak. I am tired. And you begin to sing, uh, and you begin to sing Jim Reeves songs. Precious Lord, lead me home. For godly sorrow. Has there any point in time you have shared here because you are not praying? And your husband says, what happened? And he said, I don't like my Christian life. This should be me. I don't like the way I'm serving God these days. I'm, I'm compromised. I'm weak. 
can you join me can you help me can you strengthen me and the wife begin to shed tears and the holy ghost send comfort but these days whether you come to church you don't come to church whether you read bible you don't read bible whether you pray you don't pray you don't even know the difference between godly sorrow and sorrow any longer people come to church they sleep they go to their place of work they are very full of life now the church is a relaxation center they just want to rest so by the time you are teaching they say jesus i want to shut down for 10 minutes i want to cool off well i am happy to tell you because iniquity shall abound <laughs> because iniquity shall be what the love of many shall do what do you understand what that means now faith this is what it means it means that if you want to live a godly life because olosho gay is everywhere if you look here olosho gay look here olosho gay look here every sister that carry microphone you know their secret the bible said because that iniquity is now plenty you will now say whoa faith faith parama shetie ejo ah o le pare na gbogbo awon sisters ko na e pa when once in it, it is difficult to practice christian life in the midst where iniquity abound you will look so stupid ah when i was in school when i was in ask mommy when i was in school during the valedictory service for the 300 no the final year student i was the president but i was in 200 level we were doing valedictory service for them and i was under the anointing very heavy so I, as i was going like this i said there is someone here you are a sister <laughs> you are bought it a week before the final exam i just walked straight i was walking i said <laughs> the sister is ill <laughs> when i went to meet the sister i said sister the sister is ill she knows herself she just burst into tears she didn't care she came out it was our sister called our sister coordinator came out crying and that time i was under the anointing he said bro bro it wasn't the abortion it was a week that you said before final exam a week you see i aborted and it was a sister god i met another one i said this one this time i ran i was now drained i said you you went to Elon two weeks ago you aborted can i describe the house ah he said don't describe that she knelt down beside the road it was in the road it was one of our high school she repented i went to another one they now call themselves so when i say sister they say, I want to say, don't see me don't see me don't see me don't see me don't see me, don't see me in jesus name don't I say, wait, say, I can't wait. Don't see me. Don't see me. He said, Pastor, bro, don't see me. I started entering into their hall, hostel. Iniquity. I was just president for nonsense. The iniquity has abound in the school fellowship. That a brother was preaching one day. And then the angel of God, I saw an angel who pulled me. Pulled me and pointed to the president of that fellowship and the sister court. Ah, I said, Brother Elijah, ah, I am ministering in this place. The Holy Ghost is not flowing. What happened? I said, what happened between you and that? Ah, and this is a in Jehovah. Both of you firstly leave this place. The power of God started working. I now invited the sister. The sister said, you know what? Ah, <laughs> while I won in school fellowship here, the brother <laughs> engaged with his sister. <laughs> but, but when they, during the relationship, the brother started crying. The sister said, Why are you crying? Say, ah, I don't want to put you in trouble. I am an impotent man. 
and I don't want to put this relationship in trouble. But I feel I should test myself before we continue so that I will not be a problem. When Brother Elijah test wrong, it was actually wrong. She became pregnant. She aborted. And now, and now that she aborted, as I was praying for her, God showed me out of the three children she wants to bear, she has aborted two. So I told her, this is the second abortion. She confirmed that. But to the best of my knowledge, we are age mates. But I don't know whether she has married her now. When iniquity abound, it weakens the faith of Christians. Walk off. You will just talk to yourself and say, Ah, I don't really think this thing is too deep. Our reference Lomu Kini Leo. Reference Lomu Kini. Kini you a little by you. When you see some of your friends hugging the brother right before you, they came to visit you. You understand? Your friend from another church with the brother. That they will marry. And they come to visit you. And you give them a cheer. And you see the way they are. Turn long around. Turn them to my school for a name. You will just speak to yourself and say. Ah, I've been enjoying church. Okay. I want church. Holy Ghost Lake Oconio. As well as our reference. We have been trusting God. That at least you should leave the church like three months. So that we can. If you know immorality that is involved among youths and Christian youths, you will be scared. You will be scared. You will be scared. How ladies from, their, from Riasa back to the boyfriend house, they are from boyfriend house Saturday night to the church. And then from the church back to the boyfriend house. And that's how people are living their life. And Jesus didn't kill them. Holy Ghost didn't paralyze them. Because it's not the spirit of paralysis. <laughs> Jesus is going to help you. Your love, your love, somebody say my love, for God, will not was called. One more time. One more time. When you hear Valentine, it's a temptation time. Who is your Val? When, you, when believers are asking each other, who is your Val? <laughs> Me, I don't have any. You don't have Val. Just for one night. Can I give you Val? When you look cool, they said, If I got you well, Lori, she could better. Some ladies are potential HIV, but they don't know. They don't know. How will a pastor sleep with his member and still prophesy to the same person? Wake up. Your Christian life is under fire. To see a real Christian now is real. Believers, Allah fenu jewo ati Allah fabe jona lokoju. Let's take our stand. For me, I have made up my mind. One, I will preach truth to you. And God will help me to monitor you to do it to the best of mine. But if you have chosen to go to hell, people like you, God forbid, they should double your fire. Because it's hot here. 
enemy oju mi nsin ri yin take your stand what did i say my daughter said when she got to school the first week she sent me she called me he said daddy we just resume he said 100 level 100 level he said we just resume he says a part of us that just resume they are already bringing car to carry them in the night he said we just resume. i say it's not in that place it's just a continuation you can't resume in a week and you have a garanto and then you have a carrier and you have a sugar it's not possible this has been on it's a olosho is a network and it's a network that is extended to church so when a brother just entered this church i look i look i look when i look i mark i mark when i mark i join I join. When I join, I act. <laughs> I act. I won't let a crazy brother come and have you. And then later I will say that your pastor is crazy. No. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they. For this I do what? See God in what? See God in what? He that is pure, all things are what? If you are pure in heart, you will see God in that disappointment. Oh, no parry. You will see God. You will see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. All things are working together for them who love God. Lord, I will bow to you to know all the God but you alone. Lord, I will worship you, nothing dies at me but you alone. I will lay down my idols, thrones I have made, all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow, Lord, I will bow to you to know the God but you. I want to make heaven lift up your hand, Father, whatever it will take me. I want everybody to lift up his hand. Whether you are watching me online and on, I want to make heaven.